What's up guys, Justin here with the renderingessentials.com back with another Twin Motion 2020 new feature and tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna take a look at the new volumetric light settings and how you can use that to create different kinds of results inside of your renderings. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So this is a part of the clip from the 2020 release trailer. One of the things they added is the ability to add volumetric light. And so I thought a good way to kind of test this out would be to create a scene kind of like this one and uh, use some of the new features in order to see what kind of a result we can create. So we're gonna use just a simple road model and a traffic light in order to see what we can create with these new features. So to start off, these are two models that I've downloaded from the SketchUp 3D warehouse. So I've got the light in here, and that's a SketchUp model directly from SketchUp. And then the streets and roads is the streets and roads from iClone City Elements. So you can download that, that's contained inside of the 3D warehouse as well. And so from there, we're just gonna save this and we're gonna bring it over into Twin Motion. So when I do that, we're just gonna do a file, import, um, and I'm going to bring in this scene for traffic light. We'll keep the hierarchy and fix the UV and texture and click on OK. And that's gonna bring in our road and our traffic light model. And so the road's a little wider than I would like it to be, so we may cheat in on this a little bit. But for now, let's go ahead and let's take a look at this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I want this to be more of a nighttime scene. So I'm just gonna click and drag my time down to nighttime. And your exposure will adjust right here, and we may adjust our moon brightness a little bit later. But what we wanna do is the first thing we need to do is we need to make this green light light up. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna use the material picker. We're gonna select this. That's gonna bring up our material. And under the settings, we wanna turn the glow up. And so one thing that I'm not 100% clear on is I think you would need to load a green texture map in here to get this to load green. I don't wanna to go too far down that road right now. For now, I just want this material to glow. That's all I'm really worried about. And so what we're gonna do from there is once we've got our material in here to glow, we're gonna add some artificial lights. So in order to add artificial lights, you can just go into your material or your library click on lights and let's go ahead and let's add one of these we'll go with an IES light for right now so maybe we'll use IES number 10 it really doesn't matter all that much but we're just going to drag that up here um, onto this object and then I'm going to rotate it so that it faces out so I'm just going to tap the 5 key and then we'll just rotate this so it's facing forward. So we've got it set at 90 degrees. And so we may adjust this so that it uh, points down, but this ought to work for right now. I wanna adjust the angle just a little bit so that I'm only getting a little bit of light on the inside of my traffic light right here. So up to now, we haven't really done anything that you couldn't do in the previous version of Twin Motion. But we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go to more select a color, and we'll select a green light material um, so that this is emitting a green light. And we'll see this a little bit more in a minute. And so what we've done is we've created this light that's shining outward, but probably what it needs to do is it needs to shine a little bit further. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're just gonna click on it, and we're just gonna set the attenuation to something bigger. And we may wanna bring this in a little bit. Um, you can see how this is shining on our road right now, but the angle's really wide. I think I'm gonna adjust this. We'll go ahead and leave it as, as is for right now. And then I'm just gonna come in here and I'm just gonna copy this. So I'm just gonna hold the shift key and click and drag this arrow. That's gonna allow me to create an instance or a copy to the right. And we're gonna click on okay. Then we're gonna do the same thing over here. So we're just gonna make another copy, move it down so that it's aligned with our traffic light. And so now that we've got a little bit more light coming off of these, you can see how we're getting a little bit different results. So our exposure kind of changed right here. And I'm gonna turn my daytime down even further. And so what we wanna do is there's a new feature with our lights called haze. So if you click on haze, notice what this is gonna do is this is actually gonna create a volume with haze inside of it. So now each one of these lights is generating a haze off of it. So what you're getting is you're getting more visible light rays. So it's a little strong right now. So we wanna go into the more settings. We wanna turn the intensity down a little bit. Notice if you turn it down to zero, you don't see anything. If you turn it up a little bit more, you start seeing the haze in the, um, 
in the sky. And if I click on one, that's probably gonna be good for right now. And notice that you can adjust the speed. If you adjust the speed, then your haze is actually going to move. And then if you adjust your tiling, you can see how the haze material itself gets bigger or smaller. So the material that's being simulated in the air. And so now what we have is we've got a little bit of haze in here. I'm gonna turn the speed down a little bit more. And we may adjust our intensity up in a minute, but notice how we're now getting this green light in the atmosphere. Well now, what I wanna do is I wanna add some cars driving both directions. So that's pretty simple to do. We've done that before. Just go to context, paths, vehicle path. And I'm just gonna create a path with cars. And since I'm only looking for the one shot, I'm actually just gonna use one path. And so what I'm doing is I'm just setting this so that the same cars will turn around and go the other direction. So I only have to create a single path in here. And so we're gonna right click in order to create that. And now we ought to start getting some cars coming down the road. So now we've got cars driving up and down the road. And so I wanna adjust that just a little bit. I wanna turn the density way down because we want this to feel more like a country road. So we only want a couple cars going on at once, but notice that these cars have lights on. So you're actually getting lighting in your scene, but I'm getting too much lighting from my environment. So I'm gonna go into my settings under weather and I'm gonna adjust this so that it's a little more cloudy like this. And so we'll bring it so that we've got a little uh, wet pavement on the road in a little bit. For now, I just wanna bring some clouds in here. And so for the scene I'm trying to create, which is more of like a foggy night, we're getting way too much from the environment. And so what I'm gonna do is instead of adjusting backgrounds and everything else, I'm just gonna go into my effects under my weather settings. So go to, you wanna go into settings, weather, effects, and we're gonna turn our smog way up. And so what our smog is gonna do as we uh, turn it way up is it's gonna start blocking out the lighting that's coming from everywhere else. And you could drag this all the way up if you wanted to, depending on how foggy of a scene you wanted. I actually kind of like that, so I think I'm gonna leave that as is. Um, but now what we have is we have a scene where most of our lighting is coming from our volumetric light right here. And so even this might be a little bit strong because you can't really see the lights, which isn't very realistic. So I may bring this down to like 0.1 and see what that creates. And I encourage you to always kind of play around with this. So for example, so you could turn your haze off completely if you wanted to. So we may go back into our materials and you can adjust your glow up or down. I'm actually gonna adjust the glow up a little bit more just so we can make sure that we can see the actual lights through the haze here as well. So once we've got our haze in here, I think this gives us a pretty good scene. It's pretty similar to the one from the twin motion from the twin motion uh, video. A couple things I wanna do though is I want to, inside of my weather settings, I wanna adjust this so I get some reflections off of the pavement. So notice how when I get reflections off of the pavement, specifically here, and I probably need to adjust my grass material off to the side so that it's not giving me the same reflection. So I'm just gonna add a ground nature material off to the sides here but notice how now we're getting reflections off of our pavement the only other thing there's probably two things that I want so the first is the twin motion video had a tree right here so it looked like you were watching everything from the side of the road so we're just gonna add a tree maybe this Colorado spruce, something like that. And I'm gonna drag it out into the middle of the road just because I didn't really have time to right size the uh, right size the roads in this scene. But now we've got our tree sticking out. And the one other thing that I'm not really getting that I wanna get is I want to get a little bit more brightness from the cars coming down this road. And so there's not a super good way to do that. So there are some particles that you could bring in here, like under objects, particles, there's like a fog bank you could drag in if you really wanted to use that. But you can see how it doesn't interact very well with the cars. But what you can do is with the lighting settings that we have now, our new lights, you can actually bring in an omnidirectional light right here and just drop this on the road. And then you could turn the emission down. So I'm going to bring this Omni light in and you can see how that's lighting things up. Well, I don't really want it to have a whole lot of luminosity, maybe like just a little bit, but then I'm going to turn the haze on. And so what this does is this gives me just a little bit of glow right here. 
um, that kind of like lights up the scene and you can add a couple of these if you want and it's just kind of acting as if there was a fog bank here that the car lights were interacting with so we can just kind of bring those in here just to add a little bit of interest um, not very much and you can kind of play around with it so you can mess around with the intensity and the strength so you could set this to be very intense and then set your uh, intensity very low so something like one lumen or something like that but you can use this to add a little bit of glow right here to your scene and I might drag let's drag another tree over here or maybe a couple just to give us a little bit more detail, we could always turn those off if we decide we don't like the result they're creating. But what we're gonna do, and I may come back in a future video and actually add another one with red lights facing the other way. But for now, we're just gonna go ahead and create an image. Click on create image. I don't really wanna mess around with my settings too much in this situation. I kinda like what we're creating. I'm just, um, I'm okay with the other settings for right now. We may wanna mess around with these and bring our haze down a little bit more even. But for right now, I think this is okay. Let's go ahead and click on export image and let's select our image. So when we select our image, we can click on start export. We'll go ahead and select our folder. And we'll click on okay. And so if we open up our image, you can see how we get a scene in here where we've got our trees, we've got our vehicles coming through here, and we've got our haze coming off of our light. So the new volumetric lighting definitely allows you to create a bunch of interesting images, and it really kind of expands what you can create with your lighting inside of Twin Motion. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought was this helpful to you. Have you tried this new feature yet? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.